Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Kyle Torf. I am a senior project manager with T2 Technology Group, and I work with hospitals to implement critical systems and oversee large-scale IT initiatives. Uh, with me, I have Kevin Torf, T2's managing partner, who has an extensive sp experience in IT infrastructure, implementing some of the largest IT infrastructure projects in the country, and who now works today as a trusted advisor to hospital CIOs and as a lead IT healthcare architect. Today, we're here to talk about improving patient engagement through technology. More specifically about how we were able to use a patient-centric approach when doing this to not only see real change in the patient, but in the culture and mindset of a hospital. And it may seem obvious, patient-centric approach. I mean, it's what we're all in business to do. They're the, they're the paying customers. They should be the priority. But how often when implementing a new system or changing workflows and processes, do we get caught up in the politics and keeping staff happy? And how often are we told not to introduce too much change or disrupt things too much? With these type of limitations put on us, the patient's no longer the priority. We're, we're mixing signals here. And so I'm very excited to talk about an opportunity that I got um, for a project that I got to work on at Kootenai Health in Northern Idaho, where we actually had the support and engagement from leadership and frontline staff that we were able to say, screw the politics. You know, if it means improving patient engagement, go ahead and make people a little uncomfortable. And you know, disrupt things a little bit, turn things upside down if it meant really honing in on putting the patient first and making them the priority. Well, this project started off very simply. We were just looking at ways to improve the dry erase patient care boards that I'm sure are in the hospital rooms of most of your hospitals. From that initial intention, we actually, that sparked the creation of an interactive patient care system at Kootenai Health that honed its focus on creating an experience for the patient and family that empowered the patient to become more engaged and educated in their own care. Now that experience that we created included an interactive patient care board, it included patient-focused education, it included clinical and non-clinical service requests, meal order entry, patient feedback, and of course there's some entertainment options in there for them too. So over the next hour, we're going to talk about each of those core elements that I just listed off, those some of the initial challenges we faced when trying to approach each of those items, and then what we aim to do to overcome those challenges, and what we had to do with the culture and mindset of the hospital in order to achieve that. So I'm going to hand it off to Kevin first, and he's going to give you guys some background on the hospital, T2, and those initial challenges. Good morning. Uh, I thought to... Uh set the stage uh, for Carl to explain to you what uh, we did and how we went about doing it. I'll talk a little bit about the hospital so you can understand the size, the type of hospital, and a little bit of the process and some of the challenges that we faced and that we tried to resolve. Uh, this is Kootenai Hospital. For those that don't know where it is, it's in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Beautiful place if you haven't been out there. Uh, approximately 2,500 employees. They've got 500 providers. They've got about 32 outpatient clinics that surround the Idaho area of uh, Idaho. And uh, the hospital over the last four or five years was going through some transformation changes. We were fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to help them transform some of their services. And this included everything from rebuilding out their network. I heard earlier uh, the wireless components of your mobile challenges. We were fortunate enough to put in d additional wireless services and get more coverage and area for them. We relocated their data centers and we built all the infrastructure services that they needed. Uh, this allowed us to put the applications and build the services on top of that that we're going to talk about today. Uh, this project started with the expansion of a new wing of the hospital and we were given that opportunity for the first time to rethink how we were doing things in the past and say so let's use that as the opportune time to try and recreate some of these paradigms. A little bit about T2, we don't represent any vendors, we're going to talk about GetWell here today, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't 
support or condone or, or believe and uh, try and bring any vendors to the table. We're here to evaluate and try and provide and build the services around them. Our company provides assessment, we do strategy, we provide architecture, and very often we actually implement what we actually preach. The company's just uh, structured of project managers and subject matter experts. Kyle, who's going to be talking today, represents that. We've been fortunate enough to work with some of the largest hospitals in California and across the country. Some of you might actually work for those hospitals today. And we've provided m most services in the IT infrastructure space, including some of the application delivery space. Enough said. Let's talk about the problems that you today face and I'm sure you're very f much aware of. What are the challenges that you are currently experiencing? And Kudanai was no different. But before I start, I wanted to make sure we understand what the definition of patient engagement is. And this we took out of uh, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. And really what it comes down to is the patient's and family's involvement in their own care. And I think we lose sight of that very, very often. And hopefully we're going to try and emphasize how you can do that today, where they can actually become part of their decisions and help facilitate their own well-being and health. So let's talk about the problems we have today in the actual patient room. Uh, we use the patient board today as an instrument and tool that's meant and intended to provide communications between the staff, it's sometimes the patient, sometimes unfortunately very inaccurately, sometimes not legible, and they, they create challenges and problems that you all face today. So there's nothing new that I'm talking about or telling you that you don't know already. Uh, the mistakes that are made can be very damaging and create, can create problems. They, they're not timely done, and that itself can create challenges that you all are aware of. Patient education. Most probably the single one most important item to reduce your readmissions. Uh, patient uh, education today is done in, in many cases through older archaic systems that require you to dial in on the telephone to access what you need. They broadcast it throughout the whole hospital. They're not targeted to a particular patient. And again, they're hard to access, they're underutilized, and a lot of the content is actually outdated because of the systems that are put in place and the processes we have to deal with to get new educational material updated. Let's talk about just services. Uh, you know, a, patient, a hospital today is something very similar to a hotel. Uh, you're providing patient care. These people need services. They need access to many, many uh, services within the hospital. The problem that we experience is that's a very daunting task and it's something that really is intimidating for many of the actual patients to find if they need something to get extra additional housekeeping services, if they need to get uh, any food ordered, or if they just need help, if they just want to talk to someone to get assistance and understand the illness and some of the challenges that they face. And th this is a disconnected approach to providing the services that are needed. Uh, this is my, probably the last one on the deck here for, for just some of the challenges that you face, but uh, feedback. Uh, we, we, how do we measure our success? We measure our success by dashboarding and doing surveys, but what's the, what's the value of them if they are two, three months after the patient has been in the hospital, which is unfortunately what happens a lot of the time. Those surveys get mailed out. Uh, at that point in time, you lose the value of what you're actually going to learn from the actual survey. They're intimidating. Half your patients don't fill them out. They're inconvenient. Uh, they don't bring much value, unfortunately. But we use them to measure our success and our failures. Uh, hopefully, we're going to find a way to help you overcome some of those challenges. I'd like to end off by just talking about some of the most common challenges that you face. So we found this from Johns Hopkins. And we looked at the, really the areas that I just spoke of, and five of them today are on their top 10 lists of the biggest complaints of patients. And uh, as you can see, not keeping those whiteboard updated is a, what, one of number, number five, you know, messy rooms and just having the room not being available to, the, to, the, to their liking. And just lack of understanding the environment and what services are and aren't available. So with that said, I didn't want to spend too long on this, but I wanted to really make, remind you of some of the challenges you're currently facing 
and some of the solutions we were able to provide to Kud and I to hopefully overcome some of these challenges. So I'm going to pass it back to Carl. Thank you, Kevin. So, yeah, like Kevin said, these are challenges you all face today, and I'm sure a lot of these look very fam pictures look very familiar to you. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to improve patient engagement through interactive patient care. And in order to do that, we really, we, we, we came up with a plan. We, if we were going to put in a system like this, we really had to rethink and revamp the workflows and processes and each of these areas specifically in order to make a technology tool like this even useful in a hospital. So quick disclaimer, through this presentation, I may come across sounding like a get well sales rep. I promise you I'm not. I work for T2. Uh, and there are many valuable interactive patient care solutions out there and, and patient engagement systems. GetWell was the right fit for the hospital, which is why I'm going to have, may come across sounding like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, I promise you, it's, it, I really just believe in the ideas behind the system and what it's capable of doing for the patient. So introducing, trying to change each of the items Kevin talked about and, and revamping those and rethinking those going and putting in a system like this definitely had that potential that I referenced earlier of upsetting people and disrupting things if it was not done right. So what we as a project team had to do was we had to constantly throughout the project remind ourselves, who is this for? It's the patient. They're the priority. And every question that came up, what's it like from the patient perspective? What is, what's their take on it going to be? And by doing this, we created what we considered the patient-centric mindset that we used at Kootenai Health. And I think that's really what allowed this project to be a success and to be well adopted when we rolled it out. So the first thing we wanted to do, though, is we wanted to take this mindset and we wanted to put it into words. So frontline staff and leadership came together and we created the Kootenai Health Interactive Patient Care Vision. And this just honed that focus again. So I think the middle paragraph sums it up best. Our patients and families will tell us that the experience provided through interactive patient care empowered them to be more educated and engaged in their own care. So we have this mindset, we had this intention, now we had to apply it to each of these challenges. So I'm gonna talk about all the challenges Kevin talked about and what we had to do within the culture of the hospital to make those a reality. So the patient care board. We didn't want the dry erase boards anymore. As you saw, they were failing us. What we really wanted was an interactive patient care board, and more specifically, an auto-updating patient care board that was patient-centered and that could really educate and inform the patients clearly and well and was easy for, easy for them to access. Problem was, was, this a, was the whiteboard a clinician tool or was it a patient tool? And, the hospital had gone into, the clinicians had gone into some bad habits. They'd been documenting on the whiteboard for the patient, but also for themselves. And they'd been putting in notes so that they could easily reference things when they walked into the room. And they could easily look things up um, when they needed to. And it's a common practice, um, and there's nothing wrong with it. But the first thing that came up when looking at a system like this was that this new interactive care board was amidst a much bigger system and of course packed with entertainment options and on a TV that could be turned on and off. So that meant that it was not always gonna be available for the, for the uh, clinicians to reference when they walked into the room. Well, right then and there, we had to make our first big decision. We had to pick one side or the other. Is it a patient tool or is it a clinician tool? And you know, we had the backing and we had the engagement from the staff to say that this was gonna be a patient tool. And this was a big deal. And what this really meant though, was that the clinicians would have to completely rework their workflows when they walked into a room. They'd have to find new ways to reference information before they went into the room to talk to the patient if they needed to. And this took time. We spent two months doing a clinical practice design where we worked on the workflows and processes around each of these areas. And at the end of that, we had the, the support and the engagement from the staff and, and they were ready to make whatever sacrifices were necessary to make this a purely patient-focused tool that would really benefit the patient. So that was a, that was a big accomplishment. It was really the first time that we, we got that real buy-in and that patient focus 
and actually applying it to, to something. Now that took care of the nurses. What about the providers? They had also maybe gotten into this bad habit and were maybe looking up the patient's name when they walked into the room and, and maybe not knowing all the information right off the bat. And you know, that's, again, it just was part of their workflow. And although they were involved in this clinical practice design and they helped us rework these workflows, what we really needed was a strategy to get the rest of the provider committee on board and to adapt to this new system. So with the support of the CMIO, we were actually able to recruit physician champions for the, for the system who helped us evangelize the project amongst the community and really got people excited about it and got the providers to see all the good points that were coming along with some of the things that were gonna get taken away. And what we ended up doing was that we actually created a short um, video for them to watch that helped them further educate themselves on how they could use the system well and how they could engage with the patient using the system. Hmm. Can we click play? I do have a few clips of the video here. One sec. Just, yeah. yeah, you should just be able to click there. And the audio may not be going. <laughs> okay, so these were our physician champions, Dr. Torgensen and Dr. Peterson. And what they did was they created this video to give an overview of the system. The Get Well system will replace the current systems and processes for Let's, on Let's uh, go ahead and pull up your whiteboard. Looks like your next pain medication is due around two this afternoon. Has that schedule been working? Have you had a chance to watch any of the educational videos about recovering after surgery? I haven't yet. I haven't really been up for that. It did pop up that I was supposed to, so. Okay, well, let's take a quick look at how you can access those. As you can see, there are a number of great resources here to help educate you about recovering after surgery. Here are some helpful hints about how to use the resources of the Get Well system, as well as other new tools to assist in the care of patient on this page that can provide cues and information during your visit. These include the other members of the care team, such as consultants, family members' names, and the patient's diet and goals. So as you can see, we actually were able to get the providers to talk to how they would use the system, and they actually did a mock interaction with the patient to show them how, we could, how the provider could really use the system and engage the patient with it and push the patient to use it themselves. I mean, this, this was just gonna be a really fancy TV if the patients weren't constantly encouraged to go and look at their educational content or, or reference their whiteboard or, or request services. So this, this really helped us and we, we got some great responses from this video. The providers really enjoyed it. We showed it, at, I went through and attended all the different provider committees for a few months and, and talked to each of them, general staff, pediatric, OB, surgeries. We showed them the video. They could see their own colleagues up there talking to them and that really gave us a lot of support and backing in implementing the system. Challenge number two, patient education. As Kevin said, I don't know if there's a more critical tool in really engaging a patient in their care more than educating them on their care. And what we had was really a mess. The system that Kevin referred to, it really was a scrolling menu on a TV. The patient caught what the video they wanted. They called it in on a phone and then it got broadcast across the whole hospital on one channel. It wasn't accessible or easy to use. So what we wanted was, we wanted an easy to access, patient focused education portal that also had clinician approved content on there for, everybody, for the patient to watch. In order to accomplish this, we had to actually completely overhaul the education approach at Kootenai. And that started with investing in new, in new content. And not just purchasing 500 new videos that we uploaded onto the system from Miller Fenwick, but it actually included in the specialists and all the departments investing their time in order to vet out the new content and verify that it matched the way that they teach these things and the way that they want to educate the patient. So we were getting the vetted content that we wanted from the specialists and everyone that actually was supposed to own this content from the beginning. And that was an ownership that was never really assigned at this hospital. And so that was the next step. When we brought these people in and they vetted the content, we then told them, okay, moving forward, this is your guy's baby. You need to own this related content and you need to go out and find new content, and you need to vet that new content and always ensure that it's kept up well. So we had the investment and we had the ownership, 
but there were still the, we still had processes that we, we could improve on and make better for delivering the education to the patient. One of my favorite workflow changes we made was that we insisted that the nursing staff had to watch the videos themselves before they could provide it to the patient so that when the patient watched it, they could actually talk intelligently to the patient about it and answer any questions they had or concerns they had from the video. Uh, and in order to do this, it had to come from the top down and we had the managers working with their staff. We created popcorn nights where staff could come in, spend an hour and watch 10 videos, knock them out and enjoy some popcorn and, and, and some time with their colleagues. And it was valuable, it worked. We actually got the staff to vet the content. If they weren't doing that, then we insisted that they sat in the room when the patient watched it. And they, and they encouraged the patient to, hey, why don't you watch this video? I'll watch it with you. And they sat down and watched it with the patient too. Now this was a lot of change we were doing. And in order to keep this going and to really enforce it, we had to create a leadership structure around it. So what we, I worked with the CNO and the, and the nursing leadership, and we created the Patient Education Committee at Kootenai Health. And the, they're, they were responsible for evaluating, implementing, and standardizing patient education across Kootenai Health and the Kootenai Clinics. And although GetWell served as a springboard in the creation of this, of this committee, the committee had a much larger scope and oversight and would go on to, to do a lot more than just managing the get well content and what was included there. So finally, with this buy-in and with this leadership structure, we now had the involvement and the power to affect real change in patient education. And you know what, there's a other big element of education, medication teaching. Patients always wanna know, what are you sticking in me? What are you giving me here? Come on, give me some information. And we do that, but it's, all, it's a lot of the processes today are giving them papers that they need to read or, or telling them when they're tired and they're, they're groggy. Well, what we were able to do was we were able to take the formulary at the hospital and use that in an interface to show the patients exactly what medications they were prescribed. And they could see a monograph on the screen, brief information about why it was prescribed, side effects, precautions, make them aware of that. And we had to push patients to at least look at one of these each day. But this made the, far, the formulary now a target for our patient-centric mindset. The formulary is something in the background. It's never been looked at from the patient perspective. So now we had to go through and we had to actually, the formulary, 5,000 meds and different things in there. We had to go through that entire list with a fine tooth comb and say which one should be displayed to patients and which one should not. We don't want to flood them with salines and waters and all those meds mixed in and combos and everything like that. It's going to just be overwhelming. It's going to be unproductive for the patient to try and get through. And we need, so we needed to do that work. And that took time again. And then now that we'd done that, we needed to change the process so it was always updated. So we created an interface with the system that meant that anytime the formulary was changed, it would change in, within the GetWell system as well. But that meant adding a new custom field into that formulary. And it meant that whoever added a med had to go in and mark it as to be displayed or not. And then just when we rolled out the system, we saw a lot of our generic names and everything had been kind of messed with and, and weren't documented really well in there on, on, within the formulary. So we had to do a cleanup. Again, from the patient perspective, we had to make sure that this was something we could show them. So that's education. Hospital services. It's so often a patient doesn't see beyond the four walls of their room, but I know all of your hospitals have so much more to offer the patient than just, than just the nurse and doctor that they're interacting with on a consistent basis and what's in their room. So we wanted to connect the patient with these valuable resources and actually make them empowered to feel that they could reach out easily and that it wasn't an intimidating or, or scary thing for them to call somebody and, and, and reach out. We wanted to streamline our patient, requ our patient request processes. Again, in order to do that, we had to reshape our organizational workflows. We had to rethink how are patients communicating with us and how are they reaching out? And, and this included a lot. This included non-clinical services. So this was sending requests to facilities for room repair. It was sending a uh, request to housekeeping to have their trash emptied, room service if their meals were late. Also, they could request follow-ups from pharmacy, ostomy, uh, respiratory therapy for smoking sensation. I mean, we had a whole list of great resources available that the patient would want to connect with and we wanted to make it easier for them to do that. 
we had to stop ourselves from falling into bad habits when we started discussing this. Because right away, a lot of these departments were like, oh, can we just put up our phone number? That's, that's the way we do it today. Come on, really? We're putting in this great piece of technology and we're gonna prompt them with a phone number? No, we wanna make this easy for them. I mean, how much easier? Sometimes you guys all like to just send an email instead of making a call. It's easier, it's not intimidating, it's just get it done. And so we brought all these teams together and we had the leadership talk to them. We said, come on guys, we can figure out new ways to do this. We need to think of the patient first. And with a little work with each of them, we were able to find new methods. It meant more work for them. They had now had to check a new email accounts. We created departmental email accounts that these notifications got sent to. We sent alerts to the phones of the, of the supervisors so that they could coordinate their teams. And we had to do regular reviews to make sure nobody was missing this. We had to put in escalations. If a patient didn't get a follow-up in a certain amount of time, it had to get escalated to the director to make sure they got their follow-up. And this really, it, it changed a lot and they had to take on new workflow, but by the end, they knew it was right for the patient and they knew it was the better experience for them. So they all bought in and we were able to move forward. That was, that was, that was really nice to see when we did that. While we were at it, why not improve on the, mo on the most important, in my mind, service at the hospital? Food. <laughs> Everyone needs to eat, you wanna get your food? So why not improve on our meal order service? So we were able to put in an interactive meal ordering service through the system that actually could customize the menu based off of the patient's allergies and diet. By revamping this experience and this approach, it took time and it took money. We spent four months within this bigger project working with the, their Seaboard Nutrition Service system to put in another interface that now would actually make the menu only show what the patient was allowed to eat. And if it was a diabetic ordering, they wouldn't see a big piece of chocolate cake. It's a much better experience for them. Come on. So this is great. And we really love this. And then we, we, we start talking about it. And we're like, do we want them ordering stock photos? It's a photo of what it looks like everywhere across the country. It's not necessarily what we get here. So again, the kitchen spent the time. They spent the money. They did a full photo shoot of all their food and put up only the photos of what they were really delivering. And again, with the patient experience in mind. It may not look perfect, it may not be what's in the commercials, mm -hmm. but it was real, and the patients appreciated that. So we were able to really invest in this area. But that also required changing processes. And one of the funny ones that came up was that apparently, um, patients have a habit of telling nurses they are allergic to things that maybe they just don't like, or they don't want to see on their <laughs> plates. Well, for me, that's raw tomatoes. Can't say them, don't like them. But if I told the nurse that, then through this system, I would not be able to see a spaghetti with meat sauce on there, which I love, mm -hmm. and it would take away from what I would be able to order. So nursing had to, had to make, make sure that their process included verifying allergies with patients, telling them the repercussions of telling me that you just don't like this and you want me to mark it as an allergy. So again, processes and workflows changing, all with the patient in mind. Patient feedback, challenge number four. How are we actually gonna improve on all of these areas if we don't know how well we're doing and if we don't get that feedback from the patient? It's crucial. But as Kevin said, these are normally things done after the fact, once they've left the hospital, once the damage is already done and they've already had a negative experience and there's no way to really fix it after that. With the system, what we wanted to accomplish was provide an unintimidating feedback channel that actually allowed for real-time service recovery and care improvement. I say real-time. We wanted to get notified if a patient had a bad experience for anything. So we set up prompts in the system to check on how, how comfortable they were, or how, how, how well they were being communicated to, and just, just to hone in on making sure that their experience was a good, good experience at the hospital. And in order to, to implement something like this, you can't create a feedback channel if nobody's listening on the other end. So we had to set up the processes to back that up. And what we did was we created nurse alerts. If a patient ne marked negative to any of the prompts, the nurse that was assigned to them got notified and was told to follow up with the patient. And if they didn't respond, 
Then after a certain amount of time, it got escalated to the manager. And then the manager, who maybe had a little more bandwidth than the nurse, the nurse is running around trying to take care of patients, the manager could maybe go and follow up with the patient and check in with them, make sure that we are doing everything we could to help them out. And then further work needed, we wanted to make sure that we were just always reviewing our feedback we were getting, setting up weekly, monthly reviews with directors and managers and getting everybody to just look in on this feedback so we could keep improving our processes. So we not only created that real-time feedback loop, but we also made sure we had all the information needed and people were reviewing it so we could improve as we, as we moved on. Now you cannot improve patient engagement completely at the cost of your nurses. I've talked a lot about adding additional burden and workflow to nursing, but everything we talked about, they were able to buy into it because it was the right thing for the patient. And you know, the best thing to do in order to give the, the nurses something and to make it easier for them is to invest in the interfaces needed to, to auto-update some of these areas and to avoid the dual documentation. And it's not just for the, for the nurses. If nurses don't have to dual document, they have more time to spend with, on patient care, their jobs, and they also, we can ensure that the information being sent to the patient is accurate because it's what's actually documented in the EHR. So, but in one of our big items going into this was avoiding dual documentation. So we invested in all the interfaces needed. These are some of the ones we created, but it, it meant that we could pull medications for, automatically for the patient. We could pull their attending providers and we could put, put their allergies and diet up there for them. Nurses could assign education through the EHR and have it delivered to the patient and then have it documented back into the EHR once they'd reviewed it and, and acknowledged their understanding. It's a pretty crucial part, and you know, Dilbert always says these things pretty well. Who wants to do something that they find out was just done by somebody else and somebody wasted their time? <laughs> Redundancies, we want to get eliminated, and interfaces really allowed us to do that for this type of system. So, those are what we had to do with the culture and mindset. And then through building all of that and through creating these committees and introducing these new workflows, we came out with a great finished product that we were able to deliver to the patient. I think you're gonna have to click play for me again on this one. Oh. It's just a little screen capture here of what our system actually came out looking like. Should be. Oh, there we go, it's moving. Um, so as you can see, this is what our, our our interactive patient care system look like, name of the patient at the top, room at the bottom, and these are all the different favorite um, feature areas that we wanted to make available for the patient. At the top, those are their priority spaces where they're told this is something they, need, they should do. Education is always that number one priority space. And as you can see, we had only the videos assigned to the patient that they would need. We included education that went out to everybody around infection prevention and fall prevention, making sure they had those automatically. You could do your medications. I had to use an example that wasn't interfaced for, because it was a, a, a test patient, but this is what it would look like if the patient had been prescribed a, a, aspirin. They could look at why it was prescribed, side effects, and then they could even email it to themselves so they could review it later at home. Again, I'm not a get well person, I promise. <laughs> Just it's a good looking system. Uh, interactive care board. That's, that's what ours actually looked like at the end. We had all of our caregivers, our providers, our nurses, our CNAs. We included an extensive list, and you could hone in on each of these sections further. And you can see now the caregivers are not just the nurses assigned to them. I mean, we, there's also the physical therapists, the charge nurse, the assistants, the discharge planners. The team's extensive, so we made the patient aware of all the people that were taking care of them. And you know, if they weren't an assigned clinician, they could just mark that they had come to visit the patient and that they would recorded a visit so the patient just always knows they're getting that attention. The My Day section there, uh, that expands to show a patient's schedule. We were able to pull in lab and radiology orders, consults and therapy orders, all to automatically update their schedule. I don't know what you're thinking, how can you possibly predict what time it's going to happen? You can't. But we could at least mark that it was going to be sometime in the afternoon or sometime tomorrow morning that you're going to get your CT scan. And then we made sure we're updating them with their next pain med and, and, when they could, and what their resting pain goal was. So they were just aware and educated on their care. 
Oh, and I just missed, but they can write questions and notes to the patient, and they can mark off what they did. So they could actually mark their goals. And we had to reshape the goals because the goals were no longer goals that are like the, the care plan in the HR. They were patient-focused goals that were, I want to play golf with my son in two weeks and working towards things like that. And they could go off and mark it for themselves. They had, a, they had their own little section where they could put in notes and, you know, their husband could come in and, and the wife was sleeping and he could write a nice little note to his wife to say, hey, honey, just stop by, letting you sleep, grab me coffee, I'll be back in a little while. Again, just more ways to communicate to the patient, giving them, and I know it's through technology, but it's a technology, this was on a 49-inch TV at the head of their bed. It's hard to ignore, and it's right there for them to see. And the other one I really want to show you here is, is our, our service request that we built out. So tell us how we can help. Tell us what you want to see from us. And that, here's the list, that some of the ones I touched on the different clinical resources, the food and diet. You want to quit smoking even though you're in for your knee? Why not ask the respiratory therapist to follow up with you and help you do that? And we've actually seen a few requests coming in from this. This has been awesome. Um, and then, you know, you get all the other stuff. You get the movies, you get the TV, you get the surfing the internet. And a more entertained patient, one that's kept busy a little bit, you know, they're a little happier. They're not sitting in their bed, just kind of twiddling their thumbs. So the entertainment, although it's not part of the clinical tool, it really is a great piece of the system that, do, that does a lot for the patient too. Listening to music, who doesn't want to just sit in a, their room and listen to some Steely Dan? I had a patient the other day that had me bring that up for him on Pandora. It's pretty cool. So that's what our system looked like. Oh, and then we had our, our information about the hospital. We digested our patient guide a bit, make it even just a little more accessible so they know what all is out there in this big hospital that they're in that they don't see beyond the four walls of their room for. And this should not be underestimated. Building a system like this took us a year and a half. It, it, was, it was an investment of time, and trust me, there's a lot of money involved too. But what we created and all the different pieces that had to come together, we had to create the IT environment, which we did a virtualized server and a layer two network. We created all these interfaces. I think we counted up to six in meta, um, interfaces with our Meditech system at the time. And that in also included interfaces with our Seaboard system and then with our extensions middleware system that sends al alerts to nurses' phones. We had to put the time in for figuring out the service recovery and requests with all these departments. Getting the, we actually included discharge planning, which I didn't touch on much, but we prompted the patient throughout their stay to know what they needed to prepare for in order to be discharged instead of doing it all on the last day in, in, a, in a hurried and a bit of a mess. And while we were at it, we threw, it was a new building um, that we, we, we launched this into, so we threw an IPTV distribution just to bring that tech level up another notch. Technology, again, it's nothing. I'm an IT person, but it's nothing without the processes and workflows that need to go along with it to make it an effective tool. You're not gonna, it's going to be a really fancy TV if you don't do what we, we did here to make sure that all the rest of that was taken into account. And I think I talked through most of these items here, but just all those workflow changes in those core areas, uh, that formulary, the committee, we actually documented all these processes into the nursing policies so they were enforceable and they were held accountable to make sure that they were, they were pushing patients to watch one video on their, on their interactive patient care system each day and, and at least one medication review. And we started small, but we're, we're going to get bigger on that. But again, just getting it into the policies, and then we created the steering committees and the, and the champions committees that would be needed to further the product and make sure that it met the needs of the patient. Now, a little bit about the project here, how we were able to successfully launch. Like I said, good long year and a half project. And that started with finding the right vendor first off. And we did a six month process to find the right fit for the hospital. Full RFP process, we went through, did on-site um, demos, we did site visits, we did uh, reference calls. We, we honed in on every little piece. Uh, luckily, I was brought in from the beginning on this project when the CNO was just saying, hey, how can we do these patient whiteboards? And T2 was there because we had already been doing work in those other IT areas that we were able to guide them along this process well, and we were able to keep them focused on, on, on meeting all the deliverables and moving the project along. And we were able to use our, our 
agile methodology in order to be flexible and, and account for change. So the vendor selection, big chunk, got that done. We then did our clinical practice design that I said. Again, technology is nothing without the workflows. We spent two months digging into that. We had a group of 50 to 60 frontline nurses and leadership staff working together to figure out how they could improve their workflows for the patient in order to use this system. Built the system, we did the interfaces, never underestimate how long those interfaces are gonna take. It's tricky, uh, but we got it done. And you know, there were some work interfaces we couldn't get that we hoped. There's always gonna be those limitations. So you can't, re you can't forget to revisit your workflow and relook at it now that you've built out the system more and you know what you're able to pull over and interface. And then the normal thorough testing. We did training. We, did two, we locked all the nurses in a room for two hours to train each and every one of them on how to use the system. Not only that, we captured all the ancillary departments and trained them just in case they got asked on how to use the system or if they were providing a service that was requested that they could say, hey, we got your, get, we got your interactive patient care request that you wanted us to follow up with you on this. And just talking to it well and being engaged with it. Strong team was fundamental in this. And the best thing about Kudney was they dedicated their leadership to figuring this system out. And not only that, they created a role right up there at the top that was going to be the head of the, the owner of the system moving forward. And they created a new role, a patient engagement specialist. The first duty of this person was tackling this system. So that was my counterpart. I worked with her throughout the project to make sure we were doing everything we needed to. And she proved invaluable. She's also the chair of the education committee. And so she's got a much larger scope, but this was her focus to start. Uh, our system manager, that one was important. We didn't just want another application administrator. This had so many ties to the EHR and so much clinical input. We got a clinical informatics uh, analyst to come on board and be our dedicated system administrator. This again was a bit different than how some other people might do it, but it tr proved truly valuable for us. We assigned ownership, process owners in all of our key areas. And then we included our, we made sure we were including our providers and our, and our frontline staff in the project team and that we had their input going throughout everything. So nobody's views were missed. And this was backed completely by the CIO and the CNO and their executive sponsorship really pushed the, the staff to become engaged as well. That buy-in and ownership is important. You gotta sell this thing. You gotta go out and evangelize it and make it something everybody wants to use and get excited about. That started just in the very beginning, gathering requirements about the system. We included every department that could possibly touch it to make sure that we were hearing what they would wanna see in it. We then did our, our CPD, our clinical practice design, included frontline staff as well as leadership. We had the whole mix. And that wasn't just nursing, it included other departments as well. We had that sponsorship from the executive leadership. We had our super users who were out there helping nursing. Hey, do you need any help putting on, um, updating your, your whiteboard with your next pain med or anything like that? And then, like I said, I went and talked to each of these provider committees, got them excited about it. We, we held booths at the different fairs that the hospital hosted, one for this new East expansion, another one for the safety fair, where we just showed it off. We showed all the great things that we were gonna be trying to accomplish. And again, just garnered more buy-in and more sponsorship from the staff. Little picture of our, uh, some of our clinical practice design team. Um, as you can see, I mean, wide range of people there, but all, everything from the frontline staff to our, our, our executives. So that's what we've accomplished, but you know, we're not stopping there. We want to continue to further the system and, and really push it further and further. So just to give you guys some ideas, we're going to improve our Meditech documentation, do it in more ways. Right now we're doing our education, but we want to document discharge planning. We want to put in a pain management pathway that allows the patient to um, select what their pain is currently after they've done a pain med. And we want that documented into the patient record. And then we, we looked at ways where we could expand the system further out from beyond just the inpatient units we're using. So we're looking at NICU and giving this to, to parents on an iPad. We're looking at emergency department. We're looking at you know, behavioral health. It's, it's difficult. You can't really get in those rooms, but you could use it in the common areas. It's still a great education tool, and it's something that I think they'd be excited about. And who knows, maybe we'll even get this into our clinics at some point. It's a hope that I have. 
So I know I've talked a lot, pretty fast, I'm sorry, but it's a lot of great information, and as you can tell, I get excited about this stuff. It's a really great system to put in for the patients. So in summary, again, always about the patient. Remind yourself every single time a question comes up, what's best for the patient? What should we do for them? Is it a good experience for them? And constantly, 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 don't just start off with that aspect in the beginning. And don't be afraid to disrupt things a bit and ruffle a few feathers, and we did that too. Some staff aren't thrilled, but they're getting there. The majority are, and we got that majority buy-in. So that was really impactful. Getting that, focusing those patient tools and making sure that the whiteboard is used for the patient and not for the clinician. Um, assigning ownership, that education committee and, and those, those specialists now in charge of their content. Thinking outside the current systems, those workflows we talked about, alerts to different um, uh, departments that were so used to getting calls, change it up a bit. And I can't forget those interfaces. Invest, it's worth it. It'll, you'll gain the benefit for sure. Watch my spiel. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Sans? Mm -hmm.